Hi, welcome back. I am Akileshwari. In today's video, let us explore how to calculate this last six months sales amount. We have a data set, a payments table and calendar. These both are related based on the date. So in the report, we are having a year and month filters. When a user selects a respective month and year, the total sales for the last six months from that date should be displayed on the screen in one of the visual. So how do we achieve it? Currently, I'm selecting Jan. So I'm getting only Jan sales. If I want only last six months or any six months, I will ma manually multi-select the months and check the six months data. We can achieve this way. See, from Jan to June, for six months, the total sales for 2020 is 8248. Yes, but instead of allowing an end user to select manually the six months of a respective year, even we can provide a single selection of month with which we can calculate last six months from that particular day and give him the total value. Okay, we can use this multi-selection option to verify our sales amount. Let us write a measure. When I select June, it should give me this amount. Okay, for like I, we can uh, uh, test multiple multiple selections, but I'm just telling you the final output. Okay, let me write a tax. I'm writing a measure. Last six months, we can achieve this not only for last six months, any number of months. The, in the month interval, you have to mention that month number, number of intervals. Currently, we are trying to achieve a last six months sales. I'm writing a calculate function. And my expression is sum of payments amount, pay amount column, which is having the exact sales amount for a transaction. I need to sum this. In which scenario I have to consider the sales amount based on the user selection last six months. So what should I do? I will write a dates in period function, which is very useful. It will have four variables. First variable, first argument is the column of the dates. I am referring to calendar table, calendar date, from which I'm extracting the year and pass it to the, my first filter as an year. Okay, this is the column. What is my start date? Max of the selection of the calendar date table is the one user selected. It will fall on month end. If he, he is selecting June, it will fall on June 30. If he is selecting July, it will fall on July 31st. It is automated to pick the maximum date of a particular selected year and a month. Okay, what is the next argument in this dates in period function? Number of intervals. I want to go back for six months. So I'm mentioning it as minus six. The interval can be of four types a day, you can navigate back to 180 days or one year or a 12 months, it all based on your requirement. Currently, I want to navigate back in month, I can specify 180 or something, but based on our calendar days 30 or 31, it may differ. So it's not like my requirement is not to calculate last 180 days, last six months. So I'm going with month interval instead of dates. When you have a requirement to calculate last 90 days, last 120 days, then I will write like minus 120 comma date. Currently, I'm writing minus six comma month, enter. I have to give a parenthesis. This is closing for the dates in period. Yeah, fine, yeah, fine. Now, see, I am selecting only June. Now, if I drag this last six months sales, okay, let me convert into a card. Okay, 
the table to give a complete value. See, how do I verify this last six months data? Okay, let me select July. My July value is giving us 7953, right? So let me select last six months and check this table output with my DAX formula. See, when I manually selected last six months, I'm getting 7953 as my total sales, which is being displayed with my DAX. So I'm achieving. I can convert this month slicer into a single selection. And when my end user or a stakeholder selects a single month and a year, it will display last six month sales. Hope this is very useful. Thank you.